Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming. I would like to call to order the December 20th meeting of the Downtown Design Review Board. Um, will the board and the ex officio members please introduce themselves? And we'll <laughs> Rick Blackburn, Historic Zoning Commission. Cameron Bolin, AIA representative. Jared Warsham, downtown resident representative. Laura Cole, downtown resident representative. Perry Childress, East Tennessee Community Design Center. Suzanne Taravella, neighborhood representative. Josh Wright, urban design representative. Lindsay Crockett, Knox Planning. Joanna Tour, business development representative. Oh, yeah, speaking one. Hey, John Thurman, um, downtown development rep. Mike Reynolds, Knox Planning. Dallas D. Arman, Knoxville, Knox County Planning. Christina McGron, City Law Department. Mark, Mark Real, City Plans Review and Inspections. Thank you for coming, everybody. Um, uh, the minutes from November 15th have been distributed. Um, does anybody have any corrections or comments on those? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve. I move to approve. Second. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, Lindsay, do we have any staff reports? Yes, there was one administrative approval since the last meeting. This was at the um, Walnut Building. So it's a minor revision to a previously issued COA uh, related to the fenestration patterns just on these two bays of storefront windows. The previous approval had shown four adjoining, and now it's four separated by a small um, wall, interior wall. That's a firewall for a stair. All the storefront glass will be clear, and that's it. Great, thank you. Um, so let's go ahead and move into the downtown design review certificates of appropriateness. Um, 12B 23DT, that's 430 South K Street. Yes. This is a new sign for the ground level tenant. We saw the exterior rehabilitation in the uh, previous meeting this year. This is a rectangular sign, so it's 12 feet 4 inches by 3 feet tall. It'll have neon illumination on the text and borders, and it's proposed to be installed on the transom area centered above the primary entry, and it'll project out from the building. And you can see a top view here and a side view on the screen, and I can zoom in as we discussed. Um, the sign will be attached to the framing above and below these existing multi-light transom windows. So this is a contributing resource to the Gay Street Commercial Historic District, the historic resources section of the guidelines apply. Um, the sign is somewhat, it's not a three-dimensional rectangle, but it is a three-dimensional sign that projects out from the building. So it'll be proposed at 26.6 um, square feet. It extends the full length of that central entryway um, and most of the height of the transom. It will be large in size and not proportionate to the building. I can pull up the street view image of this building too if we'd like to see that. Um, the guidelines recommend, recommend signs above storefront windows on signboards or off, extending off the building as a projecting or blade sign. So somewhat of a combination of the two. It will obscure the multi-light transom windows, which are a character-defining feature, feature of the historic building. The um, application packet initially didn't incorporate a side view, so um, the ap applicant has submitted this, the revised designs you see on your screen showing how far it will project out. Um, and there's a top view there. So that has been addressed by the applicant. So the staff recommendation was to postpone 12B23DT to allow for additional information on the sign's placement, installation, and design. Revisions should also include a reduction in size to be more proportionate to the building and storefront. Thank you for that. Is the applicant here and would they like to speak? Um, yes, I'm here, but I'm on, um, I'm on Zoom. Great. Um, do you have anything to add to what Lindsay had to say? Um, if you all have any questions, I'm here to answer those. As far as the size goes, um, we did try to scale this down slightly, and you can already tell that um, he and established in 2024 is only 3.5 inches tall. Um, also, you know, they want to use neon to try to kind of stay with everything downtown, you know, to kind of comply with that. Um, and that would be very tough if we make that much smaller as well. It'll almost just look like kind of a blob at night, I'm afraid, um, if we make those any smaller. So that's kind of where we are. And if you guys have any questions, I'll be glad to try to answer those. 
thank you for that. Um, are you saying that the, the lettering is neon or yeah, so everything on there that is gold is going to be um, it's going to be neon. Okay, thank you. Uh, does the board have any questions for him or comments? I do. I do. Um, this is a illuminated sign. So where is the electrical connection happening inside the mounting brackets? Yeah, so um, the, the, there was an existing blade sign currently there, and we don't actually run any of the primary power ourselves, but usually in an application like this, it would be inside, if you look at that side view, um, those three-inch tubes, um, mounting brackets, it, it should be run inside of there. Um, that's what we'll recommend. And then from there, everything will be self-contained um, inside our five-inch deep cabinet. And is there a bottom we can't really tell yes. from the picture. It, it'll be closed. It'll have a closed bottom. Okay, thank you. Uh, it's John. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, I can't tell on your drawing how far off the rail the sign is because the section or the elevation on the side looks thinner than what the top view looks like. So I'm, I'm curious how far off the supporting bracket the sign will project. The sign um, cabinet itself will be five inches deep. And so that will mount directly to the bracket. Um, and now that bracket is going to be what we're going to propose to a licensed engineer because the city of Knoxville would require us for the actual sign permit itself to get this um, a stamped engineer drawing. So we're gonna tell them this is how we would like it to be made, um, but the frame itself um, could change slightly, but we think that this will be fairly close. Okay, and just on the previous question, just for clarity, did you say you would run the electrical within the bracket to a concealed box? I mean, we're not talking about exposed electrical, right? No, there'll be no exposed electrical. The, the brackets will be, yeah, the inside of our sign cabinet, all of the neon wiring and all the power supplies and everything will be self-contained within that cabinet. You will not see any wiring. But then since it's over a glass wall, I'm just making sure that it's connecting to the building in some way electrically that's not visible. Yeah, so so I don't. we're not going to be running the power, but yes, I will, I will make sure to, to tell them, you know, we'd like it to come through one of our, our arms there. Um, right. But was there any, um, here we go, um, what was the reason to not reactivate the blade sign, or the, not the blade sign, but the, I guess, uh, fascia mounted above the glass transom, um, rather than overtake the, the glass like you guys have? Did you study it a different way, or was this the only way you looked at it? Uh, this is what the customer recommended just to be up above his door um, and also we would start getting fairly low clearance if we did bring it down um, above the door so I think he just kind of wanted to stay with that you know up in that in that glass height area there's some there's something about it it looks a little my only problem with it really is, is it, that the design graphically is fine but the it the proportions and the placement is forced. Uh, and I'm looking back at a street view of when Black Horse was there and they've got sign, they've got three different signage, signage um, parts. And I know this isn't the same, you know, it's, a, it's not a brewery, but um, it seems more subtle. And if you go down Gay Street and look at, um, I guess it's Babalu. Uh, yeah, Babalu, you make sure they maintain the. I don't. I, I'm just trying to find another project that has put a sign over the transom glass, which is indicative of these businesses in Knoxville. Um, which is probably my only problem with it is that it you're having to do those mounting brackets because it doesn't want to be there. Go back a little north there, Lindsay, so we can see the blade sign in profile. 
one of the things I'm looking at, we've got the black horse over the door transom. It looked like they're proposing new doors that go all the way to the top. Is that, is that true? I think that is what they are changing on the front of their, they, on their front elevation there. Th this inc that was included in the previous exterior rehab scope. They removed that transom window and extended a, a door all the way up. Sorry, Google's not letting me do it. You want to see the inside of Cruise Phone. <laughs> Lindsay, can you remind me of your comments related to the scale? I know you put that in the staff, but does it meet the... Isn't it nine square feet? Is that right? Well, that so the nine square feet is typically applied to projecting signs. Okay. So that's the blade signs that extend off the buildings. Okay. There aren't um, square footage requirements associated with sign boards, but um, without the additional in the initial application packet, when we didn't, we couldn't really see the thickness of the sign. This sort of appears to be both a projecting sign and a sign board sign. So it's twenty six point six square feet on the face. That ten feet. So, um, yeah. I mean, to me, this feels more like a signboard mm -hmm. sign. So would we be within the, the dimensions of a signboard sign? We don't have a set uh, square footage requirement for signboard signs. Oh, I thought it we just had. says that the building, the sign should be proportionate to the building. So that's up to the board to interpret if this is proportionate to the storefront in the building. Okay. So then the real issue is that the sign is floating in front of gl the glass. Um, I don't know how you're going to achieve what you're showing with neon. Maybe the tech is better than what I remember. But um, the question is, do we let the sign float in front of the, the historic glass? To me, I think that's the core of it. I think in principle, I'm not bothered by it floating in front of the glass, but to Cameron's point, it feels like an afterthought and it's not really fully integrated into the proportions of the facade and that's the part that I'm uncomfortable with. And I think too, like the spirit of the signage on in downtown, or at least on Gay Street, is it's um, submissive to the building. It's just like how subtly can you integrate signage and this one's grafting on to which I know it's signage you're trying to speak loud you're trying to have a car pass by you want the letters to be 3.5 plus and established I heard that because you can't read something going a certain speed in a car you want to they want to have presence but it's there's a reason why the other other buildings other establishments down the gay street don't have it over that transom glass so yeah, my, my entire gripe with it, the sign's fine, but the, it's just the location and the integration is forced. On the um, rendering, the lights across the top, were those a part of what we previously reviewed? Yes. Okay. Um, I found a historical image of the building and from what I can see, I don't know what the date on the image is, but it looks almost like this, the sign originally was placed along the top of the where the glass would meet, kind of the yeah. the brick, yeah. Um, so it was a bit higher, and then it extended kind of the full length of the glass across. Um, and so historically, that it seemingly is how it was done. Well, that's a good point too, because those those lights are there to light to light the sign, right? But the sign's going to be illuminated. I don't know if those lights are there for aesthetics or not. Um, yes, we will not need we will not need those lights to illuminate our sign. And as far as the neon goes, um, I know it's got some serifs on these letters, but these will be applied. These will be painted back behind the neon itself. So during the day, you'll just see that. And the sign itself will be painted a matte black. So, you know, at night, and you're not going to see some huge gaudy frame. I mean, it's going to, it should, it should be a very classy look. Um, you know, at night, I don't think it's going to be some bulging big object. Um, it looks like it's just kind of floating on the building. I think this will be a, 
a very good looking sign. Well, I do like that you are not trying to tear out the historic glass, which we've seen recommendations like that before, and that this is a removable element um, for future, uh, and it won't damage the building in any way if somebody wants to change out a sign in the future. Um, I mean, the historic guidelines uh, say that the, the building sign can be uh, on the glass, so just like the current sign is painted on the glass. And I kind of feel like this is in that same keeping. It just may be out of scale with its location. I, what do you guys think about that? What, what, what sign is current? You mean the black horse is painted on the lower right sign currently? Yes. Oh, sorry, lower right glass. Yeah. So you're saying that Kennedy being up at the transom isn't foreign because there's other signs on glass elsewhere. Yeah, and it's actually in the uh, you know seven A locate signs above wind storefront windows below second story second story windows on the signboard or on the storefront windows themselves. So to me, this meets that on the storefront window. Um, will the back of the sign just be a flat black, or or because it will shine yes, we, into the into the building? No, it will not. It'll be paint. It'll have a back on it. Um, have a removable back in case we ever need to service the sign. But it will be painted matte black as well. Um, I like to look at the sign. It's classy. I think they've done a good job trying to find the right location for it. Um, there's not a lot of space, et cetera. But uh, I do agree with staff that, you know, I'd like to see a potentially smaller sign based on the scale of the building. So I make a motion to postpone based on scale uh, for the staff recommendation. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. All right. Any opposed? Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Let's move on to um, infill housing. So we have 704 East Columbia Avenue. 12A23IH. Lindsay? Yes, so this is a new primary residence renting East Columbia Avenue. This is a city initiated um, demolition and new reconstruction project. So this is the subject house here. You can see it on the block and the site plan on the left. The proposed house is a one story residence with a side gable roof, an exterior of vinyl lap siding, and a stuccoed foundation. The house is approximately 31 feet wide by 30 feet long and will be set 29 feet from the front property line. And the parking will use an existing, um, approximately um, an existing 13 foot wide driveway um, to, along the side of the house. The facade has a shed roof stoop, and you can see the window designs here. So, just a few of the staff findings. Um, overall, this house will replicate the front setback of the existing house, so it'll maintain an existing streetscape pattern with the other houses on the block. Um, it will. Um, it, it, the block to receive new construction is characterized by minimal traditional houses, and this one replicates the existing form on the site. Um, it's a one-story, three-bay house, so it's proportional to the lot in the context of the block. Um, the infill design guidelines and the code require alley access to parking from properties with operable alleys. However, this application includes the reuse of an existing driveway, which you can see on the site plan there, um, and placing and it places parking to the rear of the house with a zero-step entry on the rear elevation. So this parking is appropriate for the site. Final revisions may be necessary to meet city engineering standards. Overall, the facade, the entry stoop, the windows and doors, and the materials meet the design guidelines. So staff's recommending approval of 12A23IH subject to the conditions that the final site plan meets city engineering standards. Thank you for that, Lindsay. Is the uh, applicant here and would they like to speak? Please state your name and address. Uh, 
I'm John Cobalt with Housing and Neighborhood Development. This is a, a low-income homeowner going through our owner-occupied program. He does have um, health and mobility issues. I don't know. Do you all have any questions or anything? Thanks, John. Thanks for coming. Um, does anybody have any questions or comments? Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion to approve and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Okay, now we have 1225 Connecticut Avenue. New primary structure, 12B, 23IH. This is it. This is a new primary residence fronting Connecticut Avenue. And so one-story residence with a front gable roof, um, an exterior of horizontal lap siding, and a concrete block foundation. The front porch will be set 21.54 feet from the front property line. And as you can see on the site plan on the left, the parking will be located to the rear of the house accessed from the alley. You can see the elevation drawings here and I'll run through a few of the findings. Um, the house is proposed to be set 21.54 feet from the front property line. Um, the house is massing, that's the front porch. So the house's massing will be set approximately 29.5 feet from the front property line. The adjacent houses are 26 and 23 feet so that um, there weren't uh, depth measurements on the front porch here so the applicant should provide those to staff. Revisions to the front setback may be necessary to align this house with the streetscape. Um, the house features a partial width front porch. The overall porch meets the guidelines so the but the applicant should provide measurements on the porch supports and porch depth. The post should be at least six by six um, and the porch should be eight feet in depth. Guidelines recommend that windows and doors are similar with similar proportions and ratio of solid to void to historic houses on the block. So staff recommendation here would be that when revisions be made to the side elevations to incorporate additional transparency. So staff's recommending approval of 12B 23IH subject to the conditions that the applicant provide measurements on the front porch depth and the setback um, from the main massing to the front property line. That would be to staff. Front setback revisions to align the house with the streetscape as needed to be approved by staff. The final site plan should meet city engineering standards. The front porch should measure eight feet in depth and feature posts that are at least six by six. And then revisions to the side elevation windows with approval by staff. Thank you for that, Lindsay. Um, is the applicant here and would they like to speak? Please state your name and address. Clay Powers uh, for 1225 Connecticut Avenue. Um, so going off of, based off the comments that were given, yes, we, we will move it up to be with the uh, block face three to six feet, depending on how that was set. Um, the guidelines for the alley access, it will, be, it will meet by city engineering when we submit that for the new site plan of moving that house up with the porch. Uh, posts will match that as well. Um, the question that I did have was to the um, elevations for the windows. Was that both elevations, like right and left, or was that just the right? So I'll um, allow the left elevation for the board to discuss, but typically we just avoid, um, recommend avoiding large swaths of siding with no transparency. So here it would be the right elevation, adding an additional window there. Okay, mm -hmm. so yeah, the uh, by elevation will have the window closest to the front porch side on the revision. Um, other than that, talking to the architect on the foundation height, um, based on the properties to the left and right, we're looking to be approximately between the four and six feet. This, to match image, code. this image doesn't convey that super well, but the um, adjacent houses have a similar height of front front foundation. A similar height of four to six feet. Yes. And that's what you're saying. You'll be at it four to six feet. Between that, yes, sir. Yeah. Between those, approximately. I definitely appreciate you showing the actual slope on the site. That's often <laughs> an issue with submissions here. Uh, would desire if it could be any lower. Uh, but as you point out, the house to your right has quite a bit of, a whole bunch of stairs to get up to that one. The one to the left has a little more build in the front yard to achieve that. But you're fighting your your back of your house being in, in the ground. Uh, so I don't know if in final construction there's any way to drop a course or a block would be great. But I don't see uh, without further engineering that we are not uh, any need for 
us to require any any lower, but I would just make that request that if you could, would bring it a little better in line with the houses around it. When when they built them originally, they didn't seem to worry a whole lot about the back porch rotting into the dirt, but um, we, we worry more about that now. Right, yes, sir. <laughs> Um, one more question I did have was on comment number nine. Um, site plan includes the planting of one new tree in the rear yard and the retention of an existing tree in the front. I do have two trees already existing in the back. Was that a... Oh, yeah. I, I see where... Yeah, okay. so that was probably just a mistake. I just want to make but sure. But you have two... He has two existing trees pointed out in the rear and then one in the front to remain. Perfect. Okay. I, I just had two comments. Uh, on the... The split face block, are you going to paint that or parge coat it? Or just, what are you proposing to leave it just split face block on the um, foundation? I would have to get with the builder on that. Um, but I would imagine from the images sent, we're trying to, again, keep it uniform with the all housing as much as we can. Okay, so that would be parge coated or painted then, correct? Okay. Um, so. If we approve it, I would say that we need to have that condition that you clarify what its finish is going to be, just so it's not left with exposed block. Um, and then on number three of your notes in the elevations, um, or number four, <coughs> siding to be vertical or horizontal determined by owner, which one is it going to be? Which one are we approving today? I apologize. Which number? Number four of the notes on the elevations. Exterior finish to be vertical or and horizontal siding to be determined by owner. Um, my number four is talking about the elevations, the foundation height on A two hundred one. He's now referring to I'm the sorry, staff not, recommendations. Not is the comments on the drawing itself? Your, your notes, yeah, the actual notes on the drawing sheet A two hundred one. Number four, correct? Yes. Provisions to the side elevation windows to be approved by staff. Yes, so they, they will be with that front right, is what we're I assuming that's what we were, uh, that was what was mentioned, of that front right elevation of keeping that one window as we're adding. Oh, I, I'm sorry. On A201, your sheet that you submitted, note four is asking, you're saying it will be vertical and horizontal siding. I'm just asking which one is it because the application shows all horizontal. Um, I mean, I'm assuming we could do all horizontal. I can get with my builder as well to confirm. Okay. We just often approve horizontal, and then I drive past them, and there's a bunch of board and batten vertical. So I just want to know what it's going to be. Gotcha. So okay. I can include, get my builder in. Include that, too. Yes, yep. sir. Okay. I'd, uh, Easy. Unless there's more comments, I'd motion to approve uh, with an added condition to clarify the finish of the foundation. Uh, material as well as the orientation of the proposed siding. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there, I thought there was a tree in the comments, in the status, there's not, okay, second. sorry. Um, so we have a motion and a second uh, on. I'll have some discussion, just to clarify. Um, are you okay with Lindsay working with them on those because I mean you sort of yes. said paint the part of part your painted, which I'm fine with too, and I think the board would be just clarity is what you're looking for. Yep, with staff. Yeah. You go you comfortable with that, Lindsay? Yeah. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Motion passes. Thank you. Okay, now we have um, 1205 Dakota, Dakota Avenue, uh, 12D 23IH. It looks like we have several together here. Yes, yeah, so um, this is another one of those instances where I'm gonna run through these houses as proposed or identical. So I'm gonna run through all four of them and then you'll see I've even put the staff recommendations all together for all four of them. So we'll have to have four motions, but I'm just gonna run through the rec staff report once. So these are four adjacent new primary residences fronting Dakota Avenue. Um, the proposed, they're proposed one-story residences with front gable roofs, um, an exterior vinyl siding, and concrete slab foundations. The houses are proposed to be set 37 feet 4 inches from the front property line. The parking is currently proposed for the front yard with an 11 feet um, uh, 
concrete driveway with a turnaround extending to the right. We can see the elevation drawings here, and I'll run through. It's very similar to the last one. Um, so the house is proposed to be 37.4 feet from the front property line. There will be three additional new construction houses on the block. And that'll create a new streetscape pattern on the block with no additional houses except for the one visible here that fronts the corner street. Um, these houses should be moved closer to the front property line to meet the base zoning's front setback requirement and allow for parking on the side or the rear. The design guidelines and the infill housing, the infill housing code discourage front yard parking. The design guidelines discourage it on properties where there isn't an alley. Where there is an operable alley, the code um, requires you to use that alley. So the parking should be revised to meet the design guidelines. That would be placing cars at least 20 feet behind the front facade of the house with access limited to one lane between the street and the front facade. So that's typically just a one lane driveway beside the house. Um, final revisions may be necessary to meet city engineering standards. Similar to the last one, the design guidelines recommend that the windows and doors be similar with similar proportions and solid devoid to historic houses on the block. So revisions should be made to that side elevation or both side elevations to incorporate additional transparency. Finally, um, 1205, 1209, 1215, and 1219 Dakota Avenue are identical. So revisions should be made um, to the houses to differentiate the four options could include revised roof lines, porch design and placement, or overall massing and design of the houses. So the staff recommendation, and I'll read it once and then um, again, there'll be four votes, but for each of these is the front setback would be revised, moving the house closer to the front property line. The final site plan meets city engineering standards. The parking be revised to meet infill housing guidelines. The site elevation window placement be revised and then revisions to differentiate the new houses with approval by staff. Thank you for that, Lindsay. Is the applicant here, would they like to speak? Mike Ballinger, Rock Creek Construction. Do you have any uh, comments only, on what Lindsay said? Well, my only question is on parking. Do you mean go all the way behind the house or just go up the side? It, it's not required to go all the way behind the house. The design okay. guidelines just want, the intent is to place the cars behind the front facade of the house. So if it just goes on the side, that's typically something that's been approved by the board. Half, maybe, maybe halfway down or something. Okay. You can see we've got a big drainage ditch coming down the middle of those four lots. We've got to reroute that, so I'm just going to... We, we can either go front or back on those, so I'm just trying yeah, to... Yeah, so it could definitely be in the go. back, for yeah. sure. Yeah, okay. Is that turnaround allowed in the front? Or is oh. this part of the design guidelines, or is it even no. mentioned? and that's what, that's what we were just discussing, is that that front yard parking wouldn't be supported by the guidelines. Right. Yeah. But I mean, you couldn't even have the, the pavement there, not as parking, but as turnaround. The design guidelines don't get specific into the turnaround aspect, but the intent is to not have a space for a car to be parked um, and not have pavement in the front yard. So I would say that's up to the board's interpretation, but to me, no. Yes, I, I think I agree. If it's there, it will be parked on. Okay. I'm sorry, was there anything else you would like to say? No. Okay. No, just um, I know that we've got to add a window on the one side to to uh, take away that long long run of siding. And are you saying no turnaround in the front yard? Yes. Okay. And engineering's okay with that, I guess. Um, well, it will. I'm not certain, but that's something that would be identified in permitting because okay. they ident they reviewed because these went through permitting already, didn't they? That's right. So they reviewed your site plan as it was submitted, and then they would re review a rev revised one. Okay. They usually want to turn around, but it's only less than 100 square feet is the guideline for that. But it, infill may supersede that. I don't know. Well, it, yeah, in the in the city code, it requires a turnaround if the. If you're, the road that you're on is classified, so either collector or arterial street, and this is just okay. a local street, so typically a turnaround's not required. Okay, that answers that. All right, um, does the board have any questions or comments? I just had one question about the, you've noted no slab, or sorry, no crawl space, all slab uh, on grade. Mm -hmm. um, I looked at the street view. Some of those are like truly like zero inch or zero step entry slab all the way down to the ground. Basically, are these going to actually have any elevation at all? Because I, I think they will. We, we, there's a bunch of brush in the back, 
okay. that we're going to clear out and we're going to try to balance the site as much as we can okay. to flatten it out. But I think, if anything, you'll have a few blocks out of the ground in the front. And that's that's ideal just to have that proportion of the band of foundation rather than just a four-inch right. slab exposed because then you'll still need a step to get inside and that sort of thing. So, okay. I will make a motion to approve based on staff recommendations. Second. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Thank you. That motion passes. Um, should we just go through each one See, individually was, now? That was 12. I was, that was 12D. We can do just same for 12E, F, and G. It's on the screen too. E, F, and G. I will make a motion to approve based on staff comments for E. One, one, one comment, though. Before, I'm sorry. I meant there was the that's included in the number five revision to differentiate from adjacent houses. So that's going to come back. Okay. I second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Nay. I mean, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Aye. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll make a motion to approve based on scaff comments for um, instance I. F. 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 Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. G is next. <laughs> All right, ready? G. I'll make a motion to approve option G. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Thanks. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Okay. Now we have uh, 1134 Ryder Avenue, new primary structure, 12H23IH. Okay. This is, uh, again, a pretty similar project. It's a new house fronting Ryder Avenue. That's a one-story residence with a front gable roof, an exterior vinyl siding, and a foundation clad in cement wash stucco. The house will be set 29 feet from the front property line. The parking is proposed for the front yard featuring a 16-foot wide concrete pad. So some of the relevant comments here. The average uh, setback of the block face is 25.6 feet. The adjacent houses are 25 and 32 feet. The house's placement will be compatible with the block. Um, the infill housing, the zoning code for infill housing states that when there's an operable alley present, the parking must be accessed from the alley. So the parking on this one should be revised to be accessed from the alley and located to the rear of the house. Um, moving the parking to the rear of the house would also allow for the preservation of these two large trees in the front yard. Um, overall, some of the comments, the house, the front side and rear elevations all have sufficient windows. Infill housing reviews do typically discourage non-operable shutters um, when they're not sized to fit the windows. The last one, noting that the trees here, guidelines state that healthy trees outside the building footprint should be preserved if possible. Um, so staff's recommending approval of 12H23IH subject to the conditions that the site plan be revised to locate the parking in the rear, access from the alley. The trees at the front of the property should be noted on the final site plan and retained. And then the final site plan meets city engineering standards. Thank you, Lindsay. Um, is the applicant here? Would you like to speak? Yeah, David's here and I'm here. Uh, I don't have no problem with, with revising the, the setback to move the, the driveway to the back. And also... When you go to the front elevation there, I, I guess you still need to do a sidewalk down t in between the trees to to come to the front. So that one wasn't a condition of approval, but that does that is recommended by the guidelines that typically there should be a walkway to the um, sidewalk or the street. Um, but that wasn't a condition of approval okay, in this okay. one. So if you have the capacity, it's great. And and you want me to move it forward just a little bit? You said no. This house, the front setback is okay. Fine. Okay. And sir, can you? State your name and address. Uh, my name is Monty Fairchild. I'm the owner of the property, and this is my contractor, David. Thank you. David Kearns, David Kearns Construction. Okay, uh, so to get approval, to, to, I mean, do we have to come back or just go through Lindsay to, to get everything else done, what we want to do? Just 
revise so, we'll have to go through the board first real quick but re revise the plot plan so provided that the board discusses and uh, approves it that site plan would come back to staff typically so you okay. wouldn't come back in front of okay. the board Okay, is there any comments or questions from the board? Can you go back to the drawings right quick? Thanks. And so one of the things, this has a written note that I cut off in a screen shape, screen Shot, but the note says that it would either be horizontal siding or shakes. Like the no, these normally two what would I do, same. yeah. Normally I don't do board and batten, and I don't do shake. Normally what I do is put a a band across where the where the, the the gable comes down, and then I do horizontal siding up there too. With a with a normally I do a vent or something that looks, yeah. Is, is that that's, good. that's normally what I do. I, I don't I don't do that. A lot of times I, on on the windows I, I like to it don't show that, but I like to put two two slats in it to give it the old style look. I thought I had a drawing that showed that, but apparently it it don't show it on this drawing. You know what I'm talking about? What, what do you mean by that? It, it just it just get on, on the bottom. It's clear, but on the top, it, it's just got two bars where it makes it look like three windows. It's an old style look that you see all over yeah. Knoxville. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. That meets the design guidelines. Yeah, okay. Three yeah, over yeah, one yeah, window. Yeah. I, I like to yeah, do yeah, that. Yeah. And, and the only other thing I do, I, the, the, like I said, it won't have no shake or board and batten. I just do a band right there that separates it, and then I do horizontal on top of it. Okay. With a, a lot of times either a octagon or a little. The last one I've done, I've done a square okay. because the square looks more compatible to the time period. Great. And this house has been built in that neighborhood two or three times already. Yeah. As approved. yeah, and it's a nice, it's a nice little house. I like the the proportions of it um, and the balance of it. Um, I agree with Lindsay that the um, inoperable shutters are unnecessary. There won't be no uh, shutters on it. Yeah. I don't yeah. Put shutters. But it, Um, any more comments? Happy to entertain a motion if there aren't. I move to approve per staff recommendation. Thank you. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Th this is next one's mine, too. Oh, the next one's yours, too. <laughs> okay, Lindsay. Thank you. Okay. Um, so this is 2527 Pershing Street. Um, this is a new primary residence fronting Pershing Street. So this intersection, you can see it's a triangular lot. Um, the house will be aligned to front Pershing. There, there's a block of houses that move south that are all facing that same way. So um, the house design is the same as we previously discussed. This house is proposed to be set 29 feet from the front property line and the parking is there in the front yard featuring a 16 foot, foot wide concrete pad. So some of the comments here, the house is proposed to be set 29 feet from the front property line. Um, the average of the block face is 21.6 feet. The adjacent house is 18 feet from the front property line. So the house should move slightly closer to the street to align with the block. Um, the parking, this instance, there's not an operable alley behind it, so they can't put the parking off the alley. Um, so the design guideline here would be to um, place the parking area behind the front facade of the infill house with access limited to one lane, so that's a driveway extending to the side of the house. Um, parking should just be revised to avoid the front yard. Um, overall, the side elevations have sufficient windows. There's the same comment about non-operable shutters. So staff's recommending approval of 12I, 23IH, subject to the fact that the um, site plan be revised to avoid parking in the front yard. The final site plan would be reviewed by staff. The house could be shifted slightly towards the front property line to align with the block, and then the final site plan meets city engineering standards. Thank you, Lindsay. Um, do you have any comments on this one as well? Uh, no, I, I normally uh, always bring the houses, you know, to line up with the other houses. You, you know, I guess that's what you want me to do. Okay, and and then I, I don't understand. I, I understand you want the the driveway moved, but but I, I don't understand how you want it moved. Well, so I think typically that's something that I'd recommend you you and your contractor and possibly your, your surveyor kind of work out and bring that site plan back to us. The recommendation would be that you don't place the cars in front of the house. Mm -hmm. I think on this lot it'll be a little different with your setbacks, but ideally 
a driveway could extend yeah, so you're, you're to the saying, side of the house. Yeah, move the driveway up and come to the side. Yes, correct. Okay, that way they can come in the side door sure. instead yeah. of the front door. Okay, yes, sir. My question might be for engineering. Can could they come off of Morelia? Um treat it like an alley and come in behind the house, I'd bring him up behind this deck on the side of the house. I'd be happy to coordinate that discussion with city engineering I mean, if that's seems, another Seems suggestion. like an option. I don't know how y'all feel. If that's about possible, that. I, don't, I don't have no problem with that, uh, doing that. I just didn't know, yeah. you know, how, how far that I didn't own on the rail side there. Right, gotcha. how far you could yeah. go. <laughs> yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll coordinate yeah. that discussion. Okay. Okay. I think I'm going to make a motion okay. <laughs> that we accept per staff recommendations with the option of relocating the driveway either off of Morelia or bringing it past the house off of Pershing. Okay. And the other things we discussed about the other words, horizontal siding, and you do your, your square gable vent. Yes, okay. All right. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Motion passes. I just one other question. We just draw this and get back to her and she goes through. So there's a 14-day appeal period after this so that you guys have some time anyways. Um, and you can submit all that to me via email. Okay. And um, no, 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 we're not going to appeal. No, you're not appealing. It, there's yeah. just a 14-day appeal period in the code. So if someone else had an issue, but okay. um, yeah. So just redraw it and submit yeah, it. Yeah, send it back okay. to me. Okay. That's great. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Um, we do have a pretty juicy workshop lined up next. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a Merry Christmas. Um, so I hope everybody will stick around after this. Uh, but um, with that, I will close the meeting. <laughs>